Good to see you, creator. We're going to review a free stream deck for OBS. This software is off the hook. It is so powerful. And when you get your head wrapped around what it can do for you, you are going to love this program. Let's get some. Well, back in 2019, I created a tutorial about how to use HID macros to assign OBS hotkeys to a keyboard. And it was a great tutorial. The problem is this takes up a lot of room. It's 20 bucks, but this takes up room on your desk. And you have to work on gluing the icons on your keys. And it's so that makes it this keyboard is kind of disposable in a way. Uh, if you lose the HID macro data, you have to start all over again and rebuild the buttons. That's a major pain in the butt. But the new solution that I have is called Leorian Board by a, pro, by a person called Leorian. This guy's an amazing programmer. What he's done with this software is mind blowing because you can have unlimited buttons. You can create multiple button screens that you can swipe through to, do, to see another set of buttons. I want to get this thing off the ground. I want you to get your head sort of wrapped around how this thing works by helping you install the WebSocket plugin that helps the software communicate to OBS Studio create a couple buttons so that you can wrap your head around what to do with the software. And if I can get that done, if I can get that accomplished right now, I have succeeded for today. Let's get started in installing the WebSocket software that helps Leorian board communicate with OBS. Let's go. Okay, here we are at obsproject.com. It's the blue website that keeps you guessing. Click the forum button in the upper right hand corner. And let's click the word search right below it there. And we're going to type in the word OBS space web socket and hit search. And you'll know you're at the right place when you see the gray T. We'll click that link. It'll take us to the download page. There's the white download button. Click that. It takes us to uh, the GitHub, GIP, yeah, GIP, GitHub website. Scroll on down and we have some choices here. I highly recommend if you're a Windows user to download the installer.exe file. If you have a Mac machine, you can give it a go as well by installing the PKG. Although the WebSocket plugin does function for Mac users, unfortunately, the Leorian board does not function for Mac users. Please do not attack Scott and let him know that you hate him because of this fact. Thank you. Let's click that and save it. And I have it already saved to my computer. So let's go in there now. Here it is here. I'll double click it. Gives me the license information. I'll hit next. You may or may not know where OBS is installed on your computer. Nine times out of 10, it's going to be installed in the program files folder versus the program files x86 folder. If you want to know for sure where it's located, all you have to do is go to your OBS icon in the taskbar at the bottom, right click on it, and then right click again on the OBS icon that shows up again and you'll get a properties button here. Click it and it opens up the properties window for that program and as you can see the target path is in program file. So if you want to confirm where your program is located that's how you do it. Okay so the uh, WebSocket installation software has assumed it is in the correct place. So I'll hit next. Hello, creator. What's happening? I'm gonna have to ask you to go ahead and turn off OBS Studio. Okay. We've got a problem with the software. I don't know if you got the memo, but it won't reflect the updates while the software is running. Okay. Thanks a bunch, creator. And then for some reason we get this weird prompt that says folder exists, blah, blah, blah. Just hit yes to that. And we will hit next and then install and finish. Now to confirm that the software is properly running in OBS, we're going to open it up. I'm going to get it up and running here. And then we will go to tools, sub choice. There it is. WebSocket server settings. That confirms it's up and running. Notice that the enable WebSocket server is checked off. That means the WebSocket will start to run when OBS is opened up. Okay, we're good. Okay, now we're going to install Leorian Board. Again, this is a standalone program. It can reside anywhere on your computer because all you have to do is click the exe files and it works. Okay, you don't have to put this inside of OBS. We're back at the forums. I'll, I'll click search and I'm going to type in Leorian Board, which is spelled L-I-O-R-A-N-B-O-A-R-D. Okay, and I'll hit search. 
and I'll click the first thing that comes up and I'll scroll all the way up to the top of the screen I'm gonna hit go to download and it will download the zip file automatically which is fantastic I've already done it so I don't have to have to save and you can install it anywhere you want in my situation I've uh, created a folder in my downloads folder called Leorian board here so if I open this thing up and take a look at the contents I see a couple folders that should draw your attention one folder is called the Leorian board receiver the exe file that's inside of there let me show it to you is responsible for connecting to OBS okay so it can grab the the scenes that you've created and all the information that it needs and uh, once it grabs that information then you can begin to create buttons so for example you could create a button that would go to a scene so instead of you having to type in the scene the receiver goes out and grabs that data from OBS and allows you to choose from the available scenes that you've created see that's why this software has to connect to OBS so it's, a, it's important that your OBS WebSocket is running properly before you get this thing running before you click that let's go back to the contents again and we'll look at the uh, stream decks the stream decks are what you actually use to click the buttons it's the software where you click the button and the command is sent to OBS and it does what you instruct that does not occur on the receivers program that only occurs on the on the two deck programs that are available here as you can see one is here that can be used on a Android device I'm going to Walmart after this video I'm gonna go out and buy a, a Android tablet and I'm going to install it on that so that I can give you the next video that will show you how to get that running. I look forward to it. Um, but in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to run the streamdeck.exe, which is just running on my computer. Luckily, I have two screens, so I can have one screen showing all the buttons, and then the other screen can be the OBS. So what we're going to do right now, let's go in and double-click the receiver. Now, I want to let you know if you click this thing and nothing happens or it gets funky or something goes sideways, nine times out of ten, it is your virus protection. So I'm going to refer, if you have that problem, I'm going to refer you to this video right here. It's Leorian talking about it. He talks about it and provides some solutions. So if you click this exe file and you don't see what you're about to see right now, here we go. There it is. There's the program. If you don't see this when you click it, go right here. Okay. I have made no setting alterations to the OBS WebSocket or OBS. I'm just going to click connect, cross my fingers, and let's see if this thing connects. Oh, there we go. The prompts at the bot bottom left confirm that it actually reached out and grabbed data from OBS. So we have successfully connected. The next part of the video is where we start creating some buttons and showing you the power of this thing. It is off the hook. Here we go. Okay, so let's make sure that you have the right things open. You should have OBS open. You should have the receiver open. It looks like this right here. And I want you to go to where you unzipped the Leorian files. Go into that folder. On my system, I made a folder called Leorian board. And I want you to click the Leorian board stream deck for PC. Open that up and double click the exe file inside there. Okay, and it loads this screen. And do not click allow click sound don't modify the stream the selected deck don't modify your port or your IP address okay it should look like that what you see is what you should use and I'm gonna click connect and this is what it looks like this is the actual operating buttons that control OBS and it says it's connected to the receivers that's a good sign so just to give you a review here um, these arrows in the upper right hand corner will take you to the next menu I just made this menu here it contains all the sound effects that I want to use okay and if I hit a button I can click the kill sound button which clicks just stops the sound from playing and it doesn't do it abruptly it kills the sound in about 500 milliseconds which is really great and you can make buttons that take you to the next custom menu that you have so in this button here I've set up some scene switching buttons, so if I open up OBS right next to it and I click these screens, it'll switch automatically to the scenes that I've created, which is really great. If I hit the next button, it'll take me to the next menu, and this gives you a demonstration of the power of this thing. It actually can control the, the volume of songs being played and actually the playback speed. I mean, this is all done with code. So if you hit this. 
I can slow the speed down. I mean, that is, that is some serious coding power right there with this software. Like I said, this is special software. And here it gives you a brief sort of demonstration of the flexibility of the size of the buttons that you can create. And you can add PNG files as imagery to the buttons. And you have full uh, control over the stroke of the buttons. That's what you see here. So let's go in. I'm going to show you how to make a menu real quick. So I'm going to close this out and I'm going to go into the receiver. It looks like a little chalkboard icon down in the task manager. If I click it, I'm going to click add new deck. And there it is there. I'll click it. And this is the editing screen. And as you can see, there is a grid width and grid height uh, designation. Now that basically gives you uh, freedom to basically make any size button that you want. So I would recommend that you go around the eight by eight or even higher. So like, for example, if I went 10 by 10, it would give me a grid of 10 by 10, which is 100. And if I right click in here and uh, make a blank button, okay, and I'll name it test real quick and change the color to something, I don't know, blue, hit uh, done for the color, hit create, it creates a button in the square. And as you can see, the word test is kind of, I don't know, it doesn't look that great. There's not much air around it. So there's these little drag buttons here. There's one to the right, there's one at the bottom and to the corner. If I drag this, you can make it bigger and it will snap to the designated grid size that you've created. So in this instance, it is 100 squares that you can modify. So I could technically make one menu with one button in it if I wanted to, okay? Pretty cut and dry. If I went in here to the grid width and I made it 50 by 50, now I have more flexibility to change the size of all these buttons. So you see what I'm saying? So the more grids that you have, the more squares you have, the larger the grid width and height, the more flexibility you have to change the button size. That's all that is. And you could technically make tiny buttons in here, but it wouldn't be practical because you wouldn't be able to read it. But you get the picture. Now, if I was to go in here and click a button and play audio, I'd click the play audio button and it's wanting to designate the sound file. And the sound file can be anywhere on your computer. The sound files do not have to be placed into OBS Studio to work. That's a good thing, I think, because it makes all that clutter. You don't have to put uh, sources with, with sound files in OBS. You don't have to deal with that. It's just, uh, it just makes OBS a little bit cleaner. All the sound is being run from Leorin board, which is really great. And if you click the little folder here, it's gonna open up this window. And the clincher is that it will only play OG files. Why? 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 That's kind of a bummer, in my opinion. I wish it played MP3s, but I can only assume that Leorian didn't want to use MP3 because of legal issues or whatever, which is fine. I think OGG is open source. So I'm going to briefly talk about the best software that you can use to convert wave or mp3 into aug using a batch method it's going to take about 60 seconds let's do it right now just go to video soft dev that's dev dot com and go into the products and select audio converter and this is it it's called the vsdc free audio converter so download it by clicking the download audio converter button right here Install it. It's not rocket science. The icon looks like this. It will install into your desktop. Here it is here. And double click it. It opens up this little program here. You can designate the output folder. In this case, it's going to download the OG files into, or I should say, save the OG files into the downloads folder. Then what you do is you add the files by clicking add files, right? and select your mp3s okay hit open drops them right in and then you select the output format so in this case it's two og click that and then just click convert files and look at that look how fast it goes conversion is complete batch conversion boom you're, you're good, good to go. go okay let's create a new deck we're going to create a sound button we're going to switch a scene with a scene switch button and then we're going to create a button that will take you to the next menu so that you can have as many menus as you want we're going to go into the receiver program and we're going to click add new deck okay upon that it'll 
automatically create the deck for us. Let's click the deck and let's make it 10 by 10 just so that we have some flexibility. I don't want to make it too small. Whoop, 10 by 50? No, 10 by 10. There we go. And we're going to name this demo deck. And all you have to do is click in one of these squares and it opens up this menu and we're going to add a sound playing button. So we'll hit play audio and it's going to want to ask us where that sound resides. Now we've already converted our MP3s into OGS. So I'm going to click this little yellow folder. It's going to prompt me to go look for the, the uh, file. And let's see here. All sounds is where I put them. There we go. And I'll put in this giggle track and I'll test it. <laughs> sounds good. I'm going to call it giggle up here. I have the option to change the button's color to blue, but I think what I'm going to do this time is I will add an image. So I'm going to click the image and I'm going to go into a uh, ping file that I saved called stars. And by the way, you can't use motion pigs, unfortunately, not yet at least. It would be nice if we could have motion buttons in there, but for now, static pings only. Hit open and we're going to create it. And there it is. Now the next button we're going to create is to switch scenes. So I'll click the switch scene button here and we're going to call this scene two. And then we select the scene name. And as you can see, it's propagated it with the scenes in the OBS program because it's reached out and grabbed the necessary information from OBS studio automatically. So this scene selector matches the actual scenes that were built in OBS. I'm going to select scene two. All right. And let's change the color to something different here. Here we go. That looks good. Hit done and hit create. And there's the next button. Okay. And we'll hit done and let's go back in. And now the next thing I want to do is I want to create a button that will take us to the next menu deck. So I'll click the square and I will select switch deck and we'll call this deck number two. Right, let's, let's take it to the sound deck sound menu. All right. And let's see, here we go. Sounds is what I named that sound menu. It's got all my other sounds on it. I'll change that button to like a green color, hit done and hit create and make that a little bit bigger so I can see it. And then we'll hit done. And then we'll go into the Lyrian board folder that I use to install the program, which is right here. And I'm going to go into the stream deck for PC. So I'll open that up and click the exe file here, hit open, let it load. Do not click allow click sound that will add a click sound. When you click the buttons, that's not what you want. Trust me, hit connect. And if I go, here we go. Here's the menu. There's that, right? Whoops. And if I click scene two, let's see if it switches it. Yes, it does beautifully. And the sound menu takes me to the sound menu. Now I have even more sounds. And as you can see, I programmed a kill sound button here in the lower right hand corner. So this gives you just a general idea. Literally, I could spend an hour to two hours explaining the functionality and the power of the programming. You can add hot keys. And by that, I mean, you can assign keystrokes to the from your keyboard. You can do stuff like random select buttons that when clicked to do different things. You click it a second time, it does something else. You can click a button and it changes the button's color. You can click a button and the button moves. Literally, the options are unlimited, but I just wanted you to get sort of a taste of what's going on. I'm getting psyched. I'm going to go out and buy myself a Droid tablet so that I can help you guys understand how to hook up a Droid tablet to this thing. I'll catch you on the flip side. Stay strong and keep fighting. Remember, don't give up. Stay strong, keep on posting, and, and you, you will, will win. win.